fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Benny Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. If half the kids in your crowd like chocolate cake and the rest like yellow cake, here's how to keep them all happy. Next time you have them over for refreshments, have Mom bake up a Betty Crocker marble cake. Boy, that's about the most happy eating kind of cake there is. Rich, chocolatey swirls in a big, sunny yellow cake. Everyone loves Betty Crocker marble cake. And it's so easy for Mom to bake with Betty Crocker's marble cake mix. All she has to add is water and two fresh eggs for a perfect cake every time. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. And you know what that means. It means you get a gee, but my mom's wonderful kind of cake every time. Mmm. -hmm. Ask mom to get Betty Crocker marble cake mix next time she goes to the store, will you? Oh, and tell her that Betty Crocker marble cake is one of the most fun to bake, too. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. That's what we call us. I am Silver. The small wagon train lumbered slowly over the plains south of the Red River. The wagon master's ten-year-old son, Tommy Stockett, divided his time riding on the seat of first one, then another of the six wagons. Tommy's favorite wagon companion was old Herkimer Freer, whose wagon was the last in the line. Gramps, as everybody called him, was a constant source of breathtaking stories about the far west that held Tommy enthralled for hours at a time. I'm telling you, son, there's some hombres out this way that don't give two cents for a man's life. No, sir. Oh, golly. Sure as I'm sitting here driving this wagon, son. Uh, jumping juniper. The other wagons have left us behind. They're clear out of sight over that rise ahead. I better get a move on. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, listen. That noise. It's you. Uh-huh. Hang on, Tommy. We're turning aside and heading for that grove over yonder in case the redskins come over that rise. Get up there! Get up! Get! For some time, Gramps and the boy waited inside the wagon back in the grove. Finally, the sound of the attack up ahead had diminished, then faded altogether. Quiet, Tommy. I hear horses. So do I. I can see him through the trees. A few Indians and a man with a black mask on. Uh-huh. I saw him, too. Gramps, we better hurry now and catch up with the others. I bet they scared off those Indians Maybe and so, Tommy. Maybe so. Get up there. Get... With a tightness in his throat and a trembling hand, which he tried hard to conceal from the boy, Gramps turned the wagon and followed after the others. Tommy, Tommy, you stay here. I'll go see you. Well, just wait here. Soon, Gramps walked back to the wagon and climbed up beside Tommy. For a moment, the boy's eyes scanned the old man's face eagerly. Then, as Gramps put an arm around Tommy's shoulder and looked away, blinking, the youngster choked back his tears and spoke with rare childish wisdom. I know, Gramps. They're gone, isn't it? Yes, Tommy. They're all gone. We're the only ones left. Just you and me. <laughs> Dad, I love my 
<laughs> it was almost dusk, and Gramps and Tommy were not far from the town of Red Bank when they heard hoofbeats coming behind them. Tommy turned and looked back. Then he tugged at the old man's sleeve fearfully. Gramps! Gramps, that masked man! He's coming with an Indian to get us! Well, hide in the back of the wagon. Quick, Tommy! It's too late, they seem. They're right behind us now! Ho, oh, oh. ho! Give me my gun. I'll fight him off, son. You get down behind Hurry me. Hurry up, Gramps. They're almost alongside. Uh, Where's that ornery gun? I put it right under the seat. Quick, son, help me find it. Oh, 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 oh. By oh. thunder, when I get my hands on that gun of mine, don't I'll... Don't be frightened. We won't harm you. You don't frighten me, mister. If I hadn't misplaced my gun, I'd have shot you full of holes by now. Well, I found the gun, Gramps. You don't need that gun. We saw you with all them Indians when you, you massacred all the folks we was with. Got you both covered now, and by Jiminy, I'll blast you for what you did. Oh, wait. Our guns are hosted. We came as friends. Will you kill my dad and the others? Oh, no. No, that's not true, boy. We passed the scene of the massacre a while ago. We wondered why one wagon continued on without stopping. We got behind the others. When we heard the rumpus, we hid in the grove. Later, we saw a masked man ride by with several of the Indians coming from the scene. A masked man, huh? Now I understand why you suspect us. Did Mask Feller ride with White Stallion like Lone Ranger? Nope, he was riding a big black horse, but... Wait, 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 hold on now. Did you say the Lone Ranger? Ah. Say, I've told Tommy stories about him. I once knew an army scout who used to come to St. Joe now and then. He told me about that Mask Man. Golly, Grace, do you really think... That... Say, I, are you the Lone Ranger, mister? That's right. Show me a silver bullet if you really are. All right. Here. By thunder, Tommy, it is. It is. We we don't have to be scared anymore. Oh, gosh, mister. I, I was awful scared. I thought you came to kill us. Like, We're your like... friends, Tommy. I am sorry about your father, but I'm sure he'd want you to be brave. You will, won't you? Yeah, but... Golly. The first thing we'll do is get you and Tommy settled, Gramps. We'll pitch a camp near town until we make better arrangements. That night in town, a rough-looking man entered the Red Bank Cafe. He stood for a moment looking around. Then, with a nod of recognition, he walked to a nearby table where another man sat alone. <laughs> hey, hi, Kirk. Where have you been? Chief Redfoot and his renegade spotted a small wagon train today. You weren't around, so I had to go with him alone. You know as well as I do our agreement with Redfoot is that we supply his renegades with plenty of fire water. But Eddie lets us go along in a wagon train race to take what valuables we need. That's right. But I'm not going to take the risks alone, Sandy. Risks? What about me? I went over to Stockton to arrange for getting more fire water for Redfoot. Well, you should have been back before this. Well, the hombre I was supposed to see wasn't there yet. I get to town till last night. Well... How'd you make out on the raid today? Get much? Yeah, there were only five wagons. I got about $500 from them, along with a few watches and other stuff. Hey, are you sure the pioneers were all dead? If one of them lived and told about seeing a white man with those Indians... None of them survived, don't worry. Yeah, here's something I found in the pocket of one of the pioneers. Hmm. Gold locket the size of a half dollar. <laughs> well, let's trade it to the widow who runs the store for some supplies. The other stuff we'll keep until we visit Stockton. Old Pop at the loan shop will buy all of it. All right. We'll stay at the hotel tonight, and in the morning we'll get some supplies and head for Redfoot's camp. We'll stay nearby for a few days. Let's go. <laughs> the following morning, Tommy Stockett and old Gramps rode to town with Toto to get supplies. Oh, 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 oh. Tommy, who had ridden double with Gramps, was lifted from the horse by Toto. Help me. Let me help you down, Tommy. There. Thanks, Toto. Now, now we go to store. Good morning. Strangers in town, aren't you? Yep, yep, reckon we are, ma'am. Uh, when you have. Oh, here. Here, Liz. Mm. Well, this won't take long to get together. Say, what are you staring at, boy? Don't my face suit you? That, that locket. My mother had one like that. Well, she probably still has it. No, she died back in St. Joe. Oh. Dad always carried the locket with him in his pocket. 
You sure it looked like same locket, Tommy? Uh-huh. The one Dad had opened up when you turned the little ring on top. Mom's picture was inside. Well, now I'll take it off and let you look at it if you want to, son. Here, now, you look it over. I just got it this morning. Thank you, ma'am. Golly, look! This one opens the same way. By Jiminy, there's a picture inside, too. It's Mom's picture. What? This is the locket Dad had when the Indians... Quiet, son. Ma'am, whoever gave you that locket knows something about a wagon train massacre yesterday. No. We got to find the man who brought it here. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one that the happy, happy people have to say. Eating our weedies and do, do, do an okay. Okay. That's the word up north. Just ask the champions. Up north, we know what weedies mean to guys like Slug and Harvey Keen. We love to see him belt that ball and make the fielders climb the wall. And Richie Ashburn, yes, indeed, he plays baseball at Wheaties' speed. Just watch him flash from base to base. This boy could win in any race. Yes, sir, Harvey Keene and Richie Ashburn are longtime Wheaties fans. Both of them know there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay. Okay. Now, to continue. For a moment, Gramps, Tommy, and Toto stood staring at the telltale locket. Then Toto spoke to the lady's storekeeper. Ma'am, tell us who bring locket to store. Why, it was a stranger. Never saw him before, Indian. Look, son, you just keep that locket. If that stranger comes in again, I'd recognize him, and I'll get word to the sheriff right away. No, no, that's not good. Uh-huh. Sheriff not have proof. Well, I tell you what, Toto, if the lady's willing... Tommy and I'll stay and help in the store a few days. We'll find a place where we can bunk at night. Why, I'll have room to put you and the boy up nights. I could use some help right now anyway. And that's a good idea. And if the same man comes in, I'll send Tommy after you, Tano, while I keep tabs on him. And that's good. Me get supplies and go back to camp. Shortly after learning about the locket, Tonto returned to the camp where the Lone Ranger was waiting. Toto told his masked friend what had happened at the store. The Lone Ranger spoke. We'll find a secluded place to camp on the edge of town, Toto. Then we'll be close in case the stranger returns to the store. Ah. When we're settled, we'll let Gramps Freer know where the boy can find us. After Gramps and Tommy were notified where to locate the Lone Ranger and Toto, two days passed without incident. On the afternoon of the third day, Kirk and Sandy entered the store. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, you're the hombre who traded me a locket for some supplies the other day, aren't you? Uh Uh-huh. Thought you said you liked it so well you'd keep it aware yourself. Well, I decided I wasn't the type to wear gold lockets, mister. That was a mighty nice-looking locket, mister. The widow showed it to me. Who are you? (laughs) Oh, Gramps is here to help out in the store. But i got to admit, he doesn't take to it too well. (laughs) Tommy! What is it, Gramps? Tommy, you remember that message you were supposed to deliver to somebody? Well, you better get going. Uh, Stop standing there staring, son. We gotta wait on these customers. Now you better go like Gramps told you. Yes, I'll go right away. Now, Gramps, we'll get the stuff these hombres are waiting for. Let's see. You get the slab of bacon while I get the coffee. Right. I'll won't it. take us long, Mister. Hey, Kirk. Something funny going on. I was beginning to think so myself. Uh, we'll come back for the stuff. We just thought of something else we got to do in town. Come on, Sandy. They're leaving, and I don't think they'll be back either. I saw them whispering together. Yeah, so did I. They must have got suspicious somehow. I'm going to follow them. You tell Tonto as soon as he gets here. Uh-huh. i got to hurry. My horse is ready to hitch his post out behind the store. Hurriedly, Gramps went out and mounted his horse. 
He rode along behind the buildings to the end of town. Then he saw the two men in the distance and followed. Meanwhile, Tommy ran to the grove at the other end of town, where the Lone Ranger and Toto were camping, and told about the men in the store. The Lone Ranger and Toto rode along the back way to the store, where they left Tommy. The widow met them at the back door and told them Gramps had gone to follow the two men. If you don't hear from us in an hour, Mrs. Miles, then tell the sheriff who we are and ask him to follow us with some men. We'll leave a clear trail. All right, let's go, Toto. Get him up, scout! Kirk and Sandy, the two outlaws, headed for a secluded valley where Chief Redfoot and his renegades were camped. As they rode, Sandy was saying, yeah, From up here on this hill, we can get a good view of the trail back of us. I t- hey, look back there, Kirk. See a cloud of dust along the trail. Yeah. Now, there's some boulders up yonder. We'll stop behind them and find out who's coming. Get up there. Come on, get, get up, up there. A short time later, Gramps rode up the same hill, and as he approached the boulders, a shot rang out. Oh, oh, oh. Whew, it was close. Reach and be quick about it. I, I'm reaching as high as I can. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, Kirk. The old man from the store. Oh, I see. All right, Grandpa, tell us why you were following us. Well, uh, I... just happened to be coming this way. Don't lie. What do you know about that locket? The locket? Oh, that was mighty pretty, like I told you. Let's take the old coot with us, Kirk. Redfoot will get the truth out of him. Good idea. Right on ahead of us, Grandpa. If you try anything funny, you'll get a bullet in your back. Get going. Yeah, come on, get, get, up, on, get going. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had followed Gramps' clear trail and had noticed where he had been joined by the two men. Then, after riding for some time... The masked man and Indian reached a point from which they could look into a valley where Indians were encamped. Indian camp, Toto. I use my binoculars. Mm. See, there are about fifteen of them. Kimasabi. Yes. Maybe them same ones who attack wagon train. Yes. I see the two white men and Gramps in front of one of the wigwams. Chief and a war bonnet is with them. Here, you look, Toto. Ah. He must stop it. It's not good. Two braves take old man now. Tie him to post in front of Wigwam. We'll leave the horses here and go closer on foot. Come on. Uh. Toto and the Lone Ranger managed to move to the edge of the camp without detection. As the braves began a death dance, Toto spoke low. Then dance a while. Then them start shooting arrows at old fella. Then shoot close. But try not to kill for a long time. They have to be stopped some way. Toto, we've been gone more than an hour. The sheriff must be on his way now with some men. If the widow kept her promise and went to him. Not right. Get Scott and ride back to meet them. Uh huh. You tell Sheriff, come quick. Suggest that he divide his men so they'll be able to ride into the valley from each end. Hurry, Toto. Uh, me hurry. Adios. Adios. <laughs> For some time after Toto left, the dance continued. Taking advantage of the Indians' attention to their prisoner, the Lone Ranger, crouching low, moved cautiously through the sagebrush until he was behind Chief Redfoot's wigwam. Using his hunting knife, the masked man cut an opening and entered. Then he cautiously made his way to the wigwam entrance. One of the braves shot an arrow. The Lone Ranger saw the quivering arrow strike the post about an inch above Gramp's head. He knew that arrows to follow wouldn't miss the old man, and though the odds were greatly against him, the masked man one thought was to stop the Indians before it was too late. With drawn guns, he sprang forward and stood behind Chief Redfoot, saying, Stop your graves or die. Who are they? Who are they? Hey, look, the mask comes right. He's got guns at the chief's back. I'll get Don't him. try it. No! At Redfoot's call, the Indians had stopped the dance and stood motionless for a moment. Then with shouts, they suddenly spread out. The Lone Ranger knew that within a few seconds he'd be surrounded, even if he shot the chief. So he quickly sprang back into the wigwam, out of sight, and prepared to die fighting. At that moment, the Lone Ranger heard other sounds, fast approaching hoops and a fusillade of shots. Moving quickly to the wigwam entrance, the masked man saw horsemen coming from either end of the valley. The Indians forgot him and their bound prisoner as they turned to meet the new threat. The Lone Ranger saw Kirk running to his horse. I'll get him. 
You're not riding any place. Hey, let me go. I'll... You'll do what? I'll kill you. Oh, well, try it. This will settle you. Oh, Open her. You all right, Kimasabi? Yes, Toto. I'll cut Gramps loose now. You're all right, Gramps. Oh, thanks, mister. I I sure thought I was a goner. Thought you was, too, when you come leaping out of that wigwam like you did. Well, we got them all under control. Are those the white coyotes who led these savages on wagon raids? Yes. Toto and I'll notify the troopers at the fort south of here. They'll take charge of the Indians. The two white men are killers, Sheriff. They'll be your prisoners. Yeah. That one over there is wounded in the leg. Looks like the other one, the one that you just knocked out, hasn't come to yet. <laughs> that was some punch you landed on his chin, mister. We'll fix him up and get him back to town. Good. By golly, mister, I knew when Tommy and I met you that things would turn out all right. Now that them ordinary killers are captured, we're going to stay on at the store. The widow wants to adopt Tommy and give me a job. That's fine, Graham. I know I'll ride double with you to the grove where Silver's waiting. I'll leave men to guard the Indians until the troopers come for them, mister. You did a fine job. Thanks, Sheriff. So did you. We'll come this way again sometime. Adios. Goodbye. 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 Easy, scout. Easy. <laughs> get him up, scout. We'll get those two outlaws to talk. And you, Chief, better tell what you know or it'll go plenty bad for you. Uh, me <laughs> talk. Men who wear masks, plenty bad medicine. Me not want him come back. <laughs> That's what they all say when they come up against the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendell Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.